I want to welcome you to the train station. Now, if this is your first time here, my name's Ken Steep. I am a professional dog trainer at McCann Dogs. And at McCann Dogs, every single week, we help more than 500 dog own owners to overcome their dog training challenges. So we love to do these train station episodes here on YouTube. And tonight, we have a very special episode. We're going to be talking to about husky puppy training in the first week. And we have a very special husky owner tonight. She's a bit of an expert. We're going to be joined by Jessica Hatch from Gone to the Snow Dogs and Snow Dogs Vlogs. And she's going to tell us a little bit about her new adorable puppy named Kira. Now, Jessica is uh, friends of ours. You'll notice that it's just me tonight. I don't have my beautiful co-host here. She's actually away at a dog agility competition. So I thought, what a great opportunity to uh, to chat with uh, friends of ours about something that uh, we, we both love. Anytime uh, we hang out, we're chatting about dogs, about dog training, dog behavior. And this is uh, the perfect opportunity for me to uh, join the uh, show with our friend Jessica. So I'm excited to to uh, to get started uh, about this. I'm also excited, and I can see from some of the conversation in the chat that we have people that are excited to see Kira as well. And just this week, um, uh, I think it was maybe oh maybe Monday or Tuesday, they announced on their Gone to the Snow Dogs vlogs, uh, Gone to the Snow Dogs and the Snow Dogs vlogs channels that they had a new puppy. So uh, we're gonna we're gonna jump in to the training. I see the pre-show has uh, ended, so we can take that down. And uh, with no further ado, in tonight. Tonight's episode of The Train Station. We're going to be talking about husky puppy training the first week with a very special guest. I'm Ken Steep, and welcome back to McCann Dogs. Now we're going to bring our special guest in remotely, and uh, I'm going to take us to the two shot where we're going to be joined by Jessica Hatch. And here we go. There, there she is. Hey there, Jess. How are you doing? Pretty good. How are you? I'm doing well, and I see you have an adorable puppy next to you. Tell us a little bit about who you have beside you there. This is Kira. She okay. is the newest member of Gone to the Snow Dogs. Oh, that's amazing, <laughs> and she's totally adorable. I know you and I have been uh, having chats over the past week about um, some of Kira's successes as she gets uh, integrated into your household, and, when, and you've had her for a week now ab about? Um, we picked her up on Sunday, so almost a week, about yeah. five, six days. Very cool. Um, I noticed in the chat that there are lots of uh, Snow Dogs fans here, and uh, I see lots of people that, like, even their, their username, like I see Oakley Fan is one of the people here. Yes. And I'm really interested to find out. Now, something we always do on the train station very early on is do a roll call. So let's find out where people are joining us from. And I, part of this, Jess, is for me because I created this graphic and Kale thinks it's ridiculous. So uh, let's do a shout out. I want to know where you guys are joining us from as you're watching. We It's so much fun to see people from all over the world. And you can see I'm giving the thumbs up riding the training train. So let us know in the chat where you're watching from. I don't know. What did Kira think of that train whistle? What did you think of that, huh? <laughs> not, not much phases her, really. N no. Memphis that's such... came down to join, too, but she's off shot. <laughs> oh, very cool. Come here, Memphis. Memphis. Now, Jess, Memphis. tell us a little bit. For, for, the, for the train station fans who may not know about you or about uh, your channels, tell us a little bit about you know your experience with Huskies. I see another adorable Husky climbing up <laughs> on the couch. Um, tell us a little bit about what you do on YouTube and, and you know your experience with the Huskies. Um, so basically what we do on the Gone to the Snow Dogs channel is we try to make videos that really show what life is like living with the Husky um, sharing our lives with them. We take them camping with us. We go on adventures. We make homemade dog treats. And then sometimes we just do fun little videos, things like that. But we try to kind of encompass like what having Huskies as pets is really like. Yeah, Ooh, I, I think that, that. it's so nice that, you know, that you can you can share those experiences. Now, I just want to ju jump back to the chat. It's moving very quickly. Uh, but I see people are watching us from Las Vegas, Delaware, Wisconsin, Virginia, oh Washington State, Lakeland, Florida, New Jersey, Geneva, New York, uh, Sweden, um, Texas, Germany. Uh, and I thank you for joining us from Germany. It's 1.30 a.m. there. So uh, thanks for jumping in. I know our UK uh, fans, when they watch the train station, they're out, they always say, you know, it's midnight here. So uh, let's <laughs> let's we hope this is fun um 
Really, really cool. So I'm, I'm really excited. I see lots of people that are saying, I don't know who McCann Dogs is, but I'm here for Gone to the Snow Dogs. <laughs> and I could totally appreciate that. And I, I appreciate you joining me here on the train station. And in fact, I'd love to know, I got a question of the day. Normally we do a question of the day that relates to like uh, dog training, dog behavior. But today, because we have so many special people joining us, I'd love to know if you're a member of the Gone to the Snow Dogs audience, drop a, a hashtag audience in the chat. I, I'd love to see, yeah. Let's see who's here uh, from the audience, and uh, I mean myself. I would have to drop a hashtag audience because <laughs> I'm a, I'm also a audience member. But your two channels, Jess, that you uh, you mm -hmm. publish to tell me a little bit about the the difference between the two. You know what you're doing on Snow uh, Gone to the Snow Dogs versus the Snow Dogs vlogs. So the Gone to the Snow Dogs channel is 100% the dogs channel. It's all you know, like I said before, videos about them, things we do with them, and with a little bit of educational videos thrown in at the same time. And then Snow Dogs Vlogs is our vlogging channel we upload five days a week on. And that's more of the seeing it through our eyes type of channel. Like you're, you're basically, we welcome you into our home and you're seeing what life is like with us. So it's us and the dogs. But we also do other things, you know, we're jeeping, we're adventuring. Sometimes the dogs go with us, sometimes the dogs don't. So it's more of like our life channel <laughs> yeah yeah I, and I I enjoy that I, I enjoy that sort of candid look at uh, what you guys are doing and certainly at, you know how you can incorporate the dogs into your lives because that's something that here on the McCann dogs channel um, you know we, we want everyone we try to help people to have a well-behaved four-legged family member so that they can do more with their dogs you know there's no there's no greater um, compliment that we see on the channel than, uh, you know, thank you for teaching me this skill. Maybe it was response to name or whatever, teaching my dog how to fetch, because now we can go out and do those things. And you guys do that so well. And I think that's why uh, we, we had got, gotten along right off the start, because we know what an important um, you know, role our dogs play in our families, in our, in our lives. It's so much fun to watch. Tell me a One little bit. Things, Tell, go ahead. Oh, yeah. go ahead. <laughs> I was going to say, we, we don't want our dogs to just be couch potatoes. <laughs> yeah. For sure. Yeah, absolutely. And, and as you and I were chatting this week, I, I said, um, having watched some of your uh, sledding uh, um, videos, I, I would love to get our dogs out, uh, you know, pulling a sled. We don't have huskies, we, you know, if for, our, for your, the Snow Dogs audience. We have uh, like border collies, border collie crosses, a uh, toy poodle, in fact, and, and a Labrador retriever. But I would love to see if they could get out and, you know, pull us down, down the trail at some point. I think that would be really fun to, to get out and do more. Now, um, my normal co-host Kale is uh, a, a, an agility competitor. She's 21-time world champion of dog agility, and we like to do more, you know, uh, in our agility arena and, and do more with our dogs. But I want to really know about your background with huskies. Um, talk about your first husky and, and sort of your your dogs leading up to Kira, your newest uh, four-legged family member. So we got our first husky what would it have been the year we got married so 2002 and i was definitely one of those i did i did my research on the breed like i had it was actually down to getting either a shiba inu or a siberian husky and we we never had a dog before it was our very first dog so i did a lot of research on the breed and i wanted something that would be active with us that would go on hikes that would be able to do 10 mile hikes through at the time we lived in arizona so 10 mile hikes through the mountains the mistake I made was we lived in Arizona, but we'd always planned on moving back to Michigan anyway. So um, that was kind of where it all started was many, many years ago when we got that first, I, I know there's cookies in there, when we got that very <laughs> first Husky. Um, and when she was about five years old, that was when we added Shelby to the mix. And part of the reason was um, Shiloh had, our first Husky was Shiloh, and she had some issues, some health issues and things like that. So we wanted to make sure that we add another dog, added another dog before anything happened to her. Um, and that just kind of continued from there. Like it was yeah. one Husky after another. <laughs> yeah. Very cool. I see some, um, some people are just jumping in. I, uh, our moderator, we have an amazing moderator, Dan, the man Luton um, has mentioned uh, mushing is so much fun. And I know that's something that uh, people can do here um, is, you know, go rent, a, 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 I guess, a ride on, on the sled. I think there certainly, mm -hmm. I know Dan doesn't have uh, snow dogs himself, but it is something that's a, like a really popular winter activity here at some of the resorts and things. And, and it does look like fun. Now, how much, how much work goes into, uh, you know, having a team? Or in your case, how much work would it take to get Kira up to the level where she could, um, you know, work with the other dogs and, and um, really, you know, I guess, serve her role? 
Kira will probably start, well, she's going to start learning to be in harness young. You want them to kind of understand that aspect of it. She won't really be able to pull anything till she's about eight months old to a year old. And even then, it'll probably mostly be like the empty sled. Uh, maybe my nephew on it. So <laughs> not a whole lot of weight behind it because, you, you know, you want them to really be grown before before they do that. Um, yeah. There's a, There will be a lot of work involved in it, but because Memphis is already so good at it, Shelby's already so good at it, she's going to learn a lot from just spending time with them and actually pulling with them. Uh, as she gets a little bit older and starts walking, we'll start giving her her cues, her ha and g and wo. She'll kind of learn those from walking and turning. It's a lot of work, but with having, a, again, a couple dogs that already know what they're doing, it makes things a little bit easier. Yeah, that's really cool. I, I think um, I, in just a moment, now we are a training channel, um, and I'm going to jump into the training in just a moment, but I see some really nice things people are saying. I'm going to mention Christina Becker uh, says, please tell Jessica that I love watching her videos. It helps distract me from my chronic pain disorders. And that's one of the really great things that we get that we get to ha you know help people, um, whether it's for entertainment purpose or educational purposes. It's a lot of fun having yes. that kind of impact on people's lives. It's really, really cool. So I wanted to bring that one up, and I know watching your videos is a lot of fun for me as well so I can appreciate that <laughs> so let's talk a little bit about training with Kira so her first week so far what what has been the same um, as with your other dogs that you've trained from puppies you know what similarities does she have so far she's very similar to when I had to do my training with Memphis she's actually been and I'm not saying this because you should get a husky trust me huskies are a pain in the butt but <laughs> she's She's been pretty, I'm going to say it, and I know it's going to jinx me. <laughs> She's been pretty easy. Yeah. I mean, I I think a lot of it is because she came from a really good, re reputable, responsible breeder, and they did so much work with her. They started potty training, bite inhibition, you know, noises, introducing her to things. So she's kind of already got a lot of the really core basics of training done. Yep. Now it's just, you know, continuing it on. Um, she's been pretty good with potty training, pretty good with everything. I mean, she slept eight hours last night. I know. Eight straight I was, hours. I was so impressed when you mentioned <laughs> that to me earlier, I, you know, uh, and I was just talking to another um, a trainer. I just came from our hall and uh, she was mentioning that her puppy, a golden puppy had slept six hours overnight. And I haven't had that experience yet with a puppy. So it's so nice because oftentimes the first week you're up once at least maybe a couple times overnight. So how did you, was there anything that you did uh, to, to set her up to be successful overnight? Um, I, because we we're very fortunate that we work from home. So I decided that instead of crating her at night, that I was just, we were just going to confine her to one room. So it's similar to the crate, except she was in the open room with us, but we put the baby gates up and she only has a certain amount of room that she can actually be in. And I think that kind of just helped her again, kind of realize what the other dogs were doing. Like, Oh, they're sleeping. Maybe I should sleep. Maybe that's what we're doing. And, you know, even like last night, she woke up once and I heard her wake up and, I, you know, I woke up and I kind of looked. she kind of just like did this thing and looked around and was like, oh, it's not time. Oh, I'll go back to bed. That was like six yeah. in the morning. So I think that kind of helps a little bit with them um, again. But I, my other dogs are very well trained. Um, she's some puppies, you know, and you and I have talked about this. Some puppies take to a crate very quickly or, you know, they be, need a little training. So far with her crate, she hasn't enjoyed it as much. So instead of putting her in it and letting her cry herself to sleep and doing all those things, we're working on slowly introducing, I don't want it to be a scary thing. I don't want it to be a fearful thing. So we're letting her stay in the room at night and then we're slowly working on getting her to realize her crate is a comfortable place. <laughs> yeah. And, you know, we, we talked a little bit about this um, uh, yesterday and I think there's, I, we'll go over a couple of things that uh, that w we'll often do with our students' dogs or our, our own dogs that can help build a little bit more comfortability with the crate. And I know you were mentioning one uh, just before we went uh, live that's been super, super helpful, but you do need to, uh, you do need to sort of um, introduce it positively. You know, you need to make sure that it's a comfortable, safe place because, you know, having a dog that's comfortable in their crate can be such a valuable tool, not only only for like puppy management, but for uh, you know the safety of your dog, as well as there's a little bit of um, leadership. There's this inherent leadership when your puppy comes out of their kennel or crate and you're doing something with them. They immediately know that you're worth listening to, that you are a lot of fun. Um, so, yes. you know, that can, that can be such a, a helpful thing. The other thing we often um, talk about 
especially when our vets, when we're chatting with our vet students, is they'll often say, you know, sometimes the dog's got to go into uh, to the vet. They need to be remain in a kennel or a crate or some, some limited space area. It's so nice for the dogs that have had some experience with it, who have gotten comfortable in their crate. And I think, um, you know, even if you, you plan on using a crate for a short period of time, it's such a valuable tool uh, yeah. to, to have, you know, to have your puppy comfortable with it. Now, yeah, I 100% agree. She, she, like I said, she will be crate chained. We're just, we're working on it slowly. I don't want her to yeah. be afraid of it. <laughs> yeah, for sure. We, yeah, we, we can definitely talk about a couple of things. So your potty training process, how often is she going out uh, during the day? Let's talk about that. So right now she's, she's 10 weeks old. She just turned 10 weeks old yesterday. Um, usually it's about once every two hours, but also it's, you know, if she's sleeping, I don't wake her up. If she wants to sleep for two hours or two and a half hours, the moment she wakes up, we go outside. And then it's like, all right, let's see if she plays for, you know, an hour or two hours. About two hour mark, we make sure to take her outside because we're trying to make sure not to have any accidents in the house. Um, so, yeah, about, about, every, about every two hours and then we'll spend a little bit of time out there. And we're, we're also trying to do where we're separating potty time from play time. So if we, yep. we go out, we go out, so, you know, she rings the bell, we go outside, we potty, we come back in 10, 15, 20 minutes. Then we go out, so we don't ring the bell and we go outside. So we're trying to get her to differentiate that the bell means I have to go potty, not that I want to just go outside. Great. Yeah, that's so good. And, and that is something that um, oftentimes people might struggle with a little bit because they just have the expectation that if their dog uh, wanted to go out, that they know that their responsibility is to go potty. But puppies get distracted so easily. You know, uh, yes. I mean, with the amount of puppies, it's so easy for them to see a leaf blowing by and then they completely forget about the fact that they had to go potty so uh they think it's party time and then you bring them back in and they have an accident on the floor and you're like well how what yes. happened there i don't know how that happened I, something that we often talk about is uh, going out on leash or line with them when you do want them to go potty being as um disinteresting as you can be until they go and then you can bring them back in or even after they go uh that you can do something uh, fun with them after the fact uh i was just chatting yeah with somebody today about, uh, about about their puppy who got really, really excited every time she went out with them. And she just had to find a little bit more um, a boring yeah. environment because again, puppies are so easily distracted. The other thing was that with her other dogs, if she'd take her puppy out with, and her other dogs were out there, her puppy just couldn't care less about going potty. She just wanted to go play with those other dogs. So she had to use that leash or line just to rein her in just a little bit so, so that she could be successful with that. Yeah, it definitely helps. We have like a short leash and then we also have a tie out, you know, but no matter what, when she's pottying, I'm out there with her. So yeah, it's yeah, it, that's so important. And, and it's going to speed up that puppy potty training process so quickly. I know you, we've talked about that a little bit. Yes. Um, let's see. I, I think we'll jump in. There's some people asking questions I, and a couple of statements here. I'm going to just toss this one out. Mike Davis says a Husky is my favorite dog breed and I can appreciate that. Uh, Mike. <laughs> Mine one, shot, too. one shot leader says, what is your favorite dog breed, McCann? Um, uh, you know, I don't have a favorite and that's some, we're so lucky that we get to see so many incredible different dogs every single week. Right now I, um, I compete in sheep herding with my, uh, one of my, our border collies. I certainly like the border collie breed, but, um, a lab, a black lab is the dog that got me started in all of this. She's the reason I'm wearing this blue shirt today and the reason I'm sitting here chatting with you guys in the audience as well as Jess. So, uh, you know, I have a soft, soft spot in my heart for those labs because they uh, they're a pretty spectacular dog. Jess, if, um, it, it, have, you, have you owned any other dogs? Have you, like, been Huskies your whole life? Um, believe it or not, I grew up with St. Bernard's. Okay. It's <laughs> interesting. I think my mom and dad have had seven total throughout the time they've been married seven or eight total st bernards so i grew up with st bernards i always had you know these great big dogs and then my grandparents always had poodles so i grew up around a few different breeds and when i was younger i i always thought i would have a st bernard I and mean, it's just always what i thought but somehow i ended up with a husky and yeah. then another one and then another one <laughs> yeah, yeah exactly i think you made a good choice they're pretty pretty amazing dogs yeah. um 
NC Rot with a training question. How can I get my Jack Chihuahua mixed to not so stressed out in the car? He's eight months. And I've got a couple things. I don't know, Jess, if there, you have any um, uh, thing you, you wanted to add, but I'll, um, I'll just throw in um, part of the part of the anxiety may come with the going in the car, then there's motion. And I mean, there's so many moving parts there that I want you to practice something here, NC Rot. I want you to uh, bring your dog in the car and hopefully you, you have some sort of, uh, you know, way of restraining them or keeping them in a, like a specific area. But you put them in the car even when you're not going anywhere. And if it's just for a couple minutes, maybe your dog goes in, you can reward them and praise them for being calm. Try to uh, break the cycle. It's hard, especially while you're driving, if your dog's, you know, be, uh, being anxious or feeling stressed out in the back to, to do anything about it. So you need to break it down a little bit. You can put your dog in the car, uh, just reward them a couple times, maybe even roll to the end of the driveway and then praise and reward them if they're being uh, relaxed. But break down the process a little bit and really reinforce that great behavior. And you're, you're going to see soon, uh, sooner than later that your dog starts to set in a little bit more because you've um, you've really helped them to understand that they don't need to be panicked when uh, when it's time for a car ride. I don't know, Jess, if there's anything that you've done with your dogs uh, to make them more relaxed in the car. Um, the only one that we had that really would and she she wouldn't really stress out. Oakley would sometimes have a little bit of hard time in the car. Like she enjoyed it, but sometimes when it was a longer ride, she would stress out. And um, when I actually when I talked to our veterinarian about it, we tried that Adaptal spray. Okay. It's like yep. a the pheromone spray or whatever it is. Mm -hmm. And we would spray it in the car about 15 minutes before we would leave. And that just really seemed to help. I don't know. You could tell the difference when she got in and it was like, oh, oh, everything's okay. That and um, her bed. I would put her bed in the back of the car. That actually mm -hmm. helped, like bringing the bed from in the house to putting it in the car. Like I think it was just thing. that familiar. Yep. She really, that really helped her. Over time, like you said, over time, she just got better and better and better at it. Okay. Um, I've seen lots of questions that I, I, I've, I didn't want to let another one go by, but I know a lot of people have been asking and I don't know whether this is an announcement or, but um, people have been asking and Guardian Jane asked, what is Kira's collar color? Is it pink <laughs> or it might, uh, or you might have a different color? She doesn't have a collar on. Look, no collar. <laughs> we're actually, um, we're planning on doing a puppy haul video on Gone to the Snow Dogs that should be released tomorrow, I believe, oh. as long as she lets me finish editing it and all those fun things. Yep. And we're actually going to announce what her official color is going to be. Um, I don't know if you know, but all of our dogs are color coded. Like yep. Memphis, everything she has is green. And so, yes. yeah, so yep. Kira's color should be announced tomorrow. Oh, so you heard it here first, guys. Make sure you don't miss <laughs> that video uh, tomorrow. We do the same thing. All of our dogs have a color. Uh, and it, I mean, we just abide by that color rule. Even toys will come in and, well, you know, if it's a right. green green one, it's got to be rads and, and so on and so forth. So it's, uh, it's easier to keep things, <laughs> keep things in uh, track by th that way. It definitely helps. Um, so let's talk about, um, so I wanted to talk a little bit about crate training with Kira and um, what, what's worked so far. Uh, you know, you, you said you're just introducing it slowly. I know you talked about feeding her in the crate and that's often a really uh, great way to start to build some value with the crate. Yeah, um, so she screams her head off in it, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> which I know a lot of puppies do. So we kind of you know, the first day when we started working her with her with it and we realized that she was screaming in it, I didn't even push her the rest of the day. I'm like, I'm not going to put you in this. We're just going to start over tomorrow. So the next morning when I fed her, I would put her food bowl in the crate and I didn't like, I didn't push her into it. I put the food bowl in far enough so she had to get in on her own. And then when she got in, you know, I closed the door and let her eat in there, waited till she was done before I let her out. Here, you can get up here now. Um, and the other thing I've been doing is like, if she's playing, if we're in the room and we're playing and she's playing with a toy and she really, really likes it, I'll toss it in the crate. Yep. So she has to go in there on her own and get it if she wants it bad enough. And then treats. We've been trying to work a little bit with treats, just taking them and tossing them in there. And just so she kind of realizes that it's not a scary thing. She sure. did a full t 20 minutes earlier today in there. We were just downstairs and she did about a full 20 minutes earlier today and she didn't scream. She didn't cry. She just she was okay. <laughs> yes. Progress. Pra practice makes yeah. progress. And that's so important. Um, I, I, I know this is something that we often talk about with our uh, puppy owners that we help is um, if you can, and it may be early for her, but if you can 
imagine or if you know what the th her three most valuable rewards are I, I don't know whether she you've uh, sorted that out with her and sometimes it's a toy sometimes it's a kind of treat it's, I mean for some people maybe it's just right. like a bubbly high-pitched voice but um, that it, and we often suggest that people write it down because it may change over time but it's always really nice to know if you have a, a really difficult skill you're working on or something that you really need your puppy to put in a little more effort that you can bring out treat number one and for our dogs it's these smelly tuna treats and it's the worst because i hate tuna i hate handling tuna i hate the smell of tuna <laughs> but if i if we're training a puppy or even some of the uh the the uh, more, less the older adult dogs i'll bring out the tuna treats if we something if it's something really challenging but is there anything that kira finds especially um enticing so far she likes everything food but um okay. when i was training shelby to do agility shelby likes food but she's very picky so mm -hmm. i like you were saying i kind of had a hard time with her where she's not toy driven and she's not high pitched voice driven where memphis yep. if you get all excited she's very high pitched voice driven and food driven shelby was kind of hard with that so i tried a bunch of different things she loves cheese so i would get cheddar cheese blocks when we were doing agility and that would be what the only time she would get the the blocks was at agility and oh, she realized that was a very high value treat for her but yeah. after about a year or two, she figured it out and she got bored with it. So the, the next time around, we, we did hot dogs. <laughs> yes. Yeah. And you know what? Uh, I, I know that uh, we do hot dogs. We'll do chicken wieners, um, all sorts of stuff yes. like that. But they're just, I mean, it's such a great training treat because it's small. It's easy to handle. It, they don't, cheese gets mushy. So you kind of have to be careful yes. as you're handling it in your pocket or in your bait pouch or whatever. But, yep. um, you know, those uh, hot dogs and chicken wieners are, can be a nice way to mix things up. And we often talk uh, to our students about mixing up what's in your bait pouch. Maybe you have, you know, maybe it's half cheese and half um, uh, chicken wieners or half hot dogs because it keeps it interesting for your dog and and there will be times as you're training a young dog that they're like hmm, you know i'm just not that into it right now and to help them through it uh, sometimes the right reward can really go a long way yeah yeah definitely so i um i put together a few uh Puppy training first steps, and this is from one of our puppy training first steps videos, and, and things that I thought we could talk about with the with uh, the uh, the audience here tonight, because I see uh, lots of people who are uh, jumping in and asking all sorts of great questions about Kira. I'll have to come back here. I'm gonna have to come back here and um, and grab some more of them. I see uh, I see a training question from Lucy the talking dog. I'll just add that to the queue, but we can come back to it. Um, so. A few things that we do uh, with all of our dogs and things that we know that are really, really valuable. Um, f for those of you, maybe you're getting a husky puppy or maybe you have a husky puppy at home and you're trying to work through some of these exercises as, uh, as Jess and I have been talking about. But a couple of things that are super simple to do and you can literally do it in uh, whether you're sitting in your living room. The first one is loading the word yes with value. And the benefit of having a word that can mark, uh, you know, your puppy's correct behavior. So, well, it's just like clicker training. It's innervates a different part of their brain, but uh, you always have your mouth on you. You always have your voice with you. So you can mark these great moments. And what's so great about um, loading the word yes with value is that if your puppy just makes a good choice out of the blue, or maybe they come up to you and, uh, you know, they've been busy chewing on a bone or doing puppy stuff, whatever they're doing, and they come over and they just offer a sit and they're looking at you. You can, yes, capture that moment and then reward them. So what you want to do with that young puppy is, it's so simple too. You're going to say the word yes, then one second later, reward your puppy. Yes, one second later, reward your puppy. Yes, one second later, reward your puppy. And so on and so on. And that's really going to, um, it's going to start to transfer the value of that food onto the word yes. And that's, I mean, that's a uh, really old um, uh, discovery uh, by a Russian scientist named Pavlov is that your puppy will start to associate that word with things of value. So you don't always have to have treats uh, because that word is going to become something that's just so rewarding because you've really reinforced it. The other thing, it's exactly the same way, but you can condition your puppy to have a really great um, uh, uh, relationship or uh, response to their name by saying, and we, we'll always do this with our puppies when we first bring them home, because the only challenge is you need to know your puppy's name because some people, yeah. uh, it, and maybe your puppy's name changes over time. But in Jess's case, she could just sit on the floor and literally say, Kira, reward, Kira, reward, Kira, 
reward. And, you know, a couple minutes uh, per day or a couple of minutes, a couple times per day. And Kira will start, you'll start to see that super quick head turn every time you say her name. And uh, it's, these are such simple exercises, but they're so much fun to do with these little tiny puppies. Now, Jess, have you, uh, are you, Kira, Kira, it's going to be Kira for, uh, for forever. Like I know we've changed some dogs names around. Does she have any nicknames yet? Not yet. I mean, I call her Shorty, but I call Memphis Shorty as well. I, all the puppies, I tend to do that when they're young. And someone's like, come on, Shorty, let's go. Like, it, and it's probably just good because they're short. And I still have done that with Memphis for a long time. But we haven't really called her anything else yet. Not yet. I, I mean, think, I'm sure uh, eventually she'll have a nickname, but not yet. Yeah. <laughs> when when Kale and I are planning dog names, uh, we always think about what does it sound like shortened. Uh, you know what what are the what are the alternative names that go uh, along with them. So I know that that's always part of the process when we're we're picking puppy names, and that's it's a, it's a lot of fun. I think to choosing different names. Hippie Shake is like oh, poodly yeah. poodly doodly. She's she's our toy poodle. Poodly doodly. Uh, the t- the tiny terror. I mean, the list goes on. But um, by building value on some of those things and rewarding your dog, it doesn't matter what you call them as long as they associate that with really good things. Now, an exercise, Jess, that I thought would be fun for you and Jamie to do with uh, with Kira and something we do uh, with uh, with uh, all the puppies that come in uh, for classes. uh, But we ask our students to do them at home. Something we do at home is. We'll sit at either end of a hallway and close all the doors and we will have some great treats or maybe it's a toy. I mean, whatever your dog really loves and we'll entice the dog, let them, one person will sit at the other end of the hallway and hold that puppy and get them really excited. And then the person that's sitting at the other end will, you know, get ready, set, and they'll still see that you have treats. And then you can call their name and the, the holder will release them. What a great way to build up drive. Here's the best part is your puppy's getting tired the whole time after like, five or six repetitions of going up and down the hallway, your puppy's like, okay, uh, you know, I'm pretty excited about my name uh, and I think I'm ready for a nap. So I thought that was, as we were putting together, as I was putting together some stuff for today's show, I, I wanted to, uh, I wanted to mention that that might be something that you and Jamie can, uh, can burn off some of that puppy energy. But right now it looks like that puppy energy may be burned off already. She was doing zoomies in the backyard right before the show. Like I was out there and <laughs> all of them were like going crazy in the yard. And I'm going, this will be good. You'll, you'll stay still for the show. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. Um, the next thing I, I wanted to talk about just for some uh, Husky puppy training. And I don't know, I think you, you've, we, you and I talked about this. We talked about it a little bit is luring simple positions, you know, using some food and guiding her around, luring her into the sit. Talk about that with Kira a little bit. How has that process gone? She's actually, she's pretty much figured that out. I, um, because we have a multiple dog household, we teach, we try to teach each of the dogs patience. So we try to teach her that, you know, she's the youngest when they all come in from outside and everybody gets a treat, you know, for coming in and coming to the door and doing everything they're supposed to do, you know, Shelby gets a treat first, then Memphis, then Kira and Kira has to sit, but on the floor before she gets it. Um, you know, and like you kind of said, you know, I'm holding the tree up a little bit higher. So she's doing the lean back thing and it's like, oh, I have to sit down. And it, it only took her a couple of, a couple of tries before she figured out. It was really nice to see that she wasn't freaking out that everybody was getting food and she had to have that patience. She was actually really good with watching what was going on. You could see her watching. Okay. She's getting it. She's getting it. Now I'm getting it. Okay. She's getting, okay. Now I'm getting it. So she's, She's learning patience and she's learning her place pretty quickly. Yeah. And that's, it's so nice to have, um, you know, a dog that understands a little bit of self-control. I mean, it just applies to so many aspects of their life. It, it could be um, something like going out the door. Uh, we, we teach a weight command right. with, uh, with our, in our like grade one classes. And uh, it's so valuable for the little things, you know, like I mentioned, going out the door, maybe going up the stairs. Cause that can, that can be a disastrous process. If you're halfway up yeah. with an armload of laundry and the puppy goes zooming through your legs. Yeah, yeah, definitely. A weight command is something that even, you know, Memphis is six years old and her and I still work on that because Memphis didn't get patience very well. (laughs) (laughs) Um, Some other things I wanted to uh, talk about that are so valuable for puppies and something that you and I have talked about is exposing them to different surfaces and like different environments. Certainly they they need to be um, not heavily trafficked by dogs, but what sort of things have you done um, to sort of expose her to different surfaces sights sounds environments how have you how have you handled that with kira 
So the breeders that we got her from, again, like I was saying earlier, they were amazing people and they do a lot of that before we even get her. They have, you know, like this ball that's got like spikes on it that the, not spikes, but like the little rubber nubbies that the dogs walk on and things like that. And then they have stuff out in their yard, different things, different playhouses and things to kind of, you know, let them figure things out. Um, so far, what we've done is like, I have an agility tunnel for the dog. So we made sure to get that out so she could check that out. You know, it makes noise when you unfold it. So we were out there unfolding it and folding it and making it yeah. make that weird noise. She was yeah. really interested in it. Um, we've introduced her to the vacuum cleaner, which she had already been introduced to one. She could have cared less about it. Uh, we have a teeter for agility out in the yard and we've you know, let her play with that. And she, the other day we were out there and she was running around and, you know, she'd already seen it out there. She ran halfway up it, turned around and went back down. And I'm going, oh, you, I, you're fearless. Like, I mean, <laughs> yeah. you're just fearless. You got but, a future agility um, dog. I hope so. We hope so, huh? <laughs> <laughs> what do you think, Memphis? I know. But yeah, I've been, we've been trying to make sure that we introduce her to different things. We've had, um, she hasn't met any of our friends' dogs yet, but we've had friends of ours come over to make sure you know, that she understands people coming and going in the house because we, we do have a lot of people that come over. And uh, this weekend, probably this weekend, she'll be introduced to two of our close friends' dogs. I don't want her introduced to any other dogs until she has, you know, all of her shots and things like that. But um, we were telling our friends, you know, come on over. We, we want you to come in and we want you, we want her to meet different people. She got to hang out with my nephew two days in a row. So she spent time with, you know, a a young two almost two year old and uh yesterday we kind of just let them interact together so she could kind of you know the baby's making noise and doing things we're just kind of letting her experience in controlled environments certain things <laughs> yeah um, everybody's all snuggled yeah, up on the couch now i don't know how she's fitting here but she is <laughs> <laughs> um we we do often talk about um, using a house line in uh, those scenarios for uh, puppy owners if you feel like if you're not sure if you're not really sure how your puppy might react it's so important to make sure that that you can help them to be successful so uh, when you are especially if you're going to be bringing your uh, puppy to let's say it could maybe it's grass i mean maybe it's something as simple as your backyard or maybe it's the driveway or who knows what the thing is to make sure that you have your leash or your line on your puppy so that they because you just don't don't know what their um, what their response might be at this point, and you want to be sure right. that you're able to uh, redirect them if you need to, or stop them from uh, panicking or uh, whatever. Or even uh, you know if they're a little bit uh, apprehensive, you're, you're there with them online, and you can encourage them to walk across. So something we'll often do is have like. Um, like those extendable uh, fences sort of things that you that you put out. They're, used to, they're like baby gates, kind of similar kind of thing, but they're much thinner. We'll put those down on the ground and we'll just walk the puppy across them. Or we'll have like a tarp out, for example, just roll right. out a tarp and walk across it. Because some of these new things, you know, if your puppy were uh, to experience them for the first time can be can be stressful and we want to do it in a controlled way where we're there to support them so that the first time that they see these things uh, they don't feel like they're on their own so so that's um that's so important and i can't stress that enough introducing your puppy to to new environments and that kind of things um you gotta learn all the things (laughs) <laughs> so one thing, and I've noticed that Kira is really comfortable with handling, and it's something that people definitely, uh, they undervalue, I think, when they're t- when it comes to puppy training. They say, oh yeah, I can I can handle my dog, or I can take their collar. But we uh, talk a lot about handling and why that's so important. You know, simple things like handling your puppy's leg, simply, uh, you know, grabbing their leg and just gently her touching as you, yeah, her little feet for sure. Um, do you do those exercises with all of your puppies as well? Yeah, um, it was really important for me to for our dogs to know that like, especially like when you need to trim their nails or if they get something in in their feet. We do a lot of hiking, a lot of outdoor things, so they need to know that um, you know getting your feet touched isn't a bad thing. So one of the things like you were saying that's really important to me is to make sure that they know that this is okay. You know, and she's pretty tired anyway, but just touching their feet <laughs> and making sure that they know that this is okay. Um, they again the breeders worked on that with them as well did their nails and stuff like that as when they were puppies and made it a very positive thing so she's she doesn't really have a problem with people touching her feet she seems to do well with that memphis does pretty good with that too so she's like we worked on that quite a bit huh yeah memphis is kind of showing off sitting up nice and tall you guys are you guys talking about me yet right right yeah i think um 
as I mentioned, it, people undervalue it, but it's so important in simple things like trimming their nails it, with some handling exercises down the road, you know, in, in six months, eight months, however long, uh, y- you know, you start to get into some of the regular nail trimming, your puppy, if they're, if they've been handled, they've been rewarded for being comfortable and relaxed while you're handling them. It makes a huge difference. And I know if Kale were here, she would talk about a story where uh, we went hiking with the dogs. Uh, one of the dogs was out swimming and she came in, uh, she came in out of the water on three legs and she had a fish hook in her pad. Oof. I mean, we'd done, uh, yeah, just awful. But she, we'd done so much handling with her that even in that really like stressful situation, she was comfortable with us taking control of that paw and removing that hook. And you just never know when you're going to need it. So that handling stuff is is so important. The other thing that's really great, especially when you have a puppy, is simple things like taking their collar. You know, how many how many hand-shy dogs do you see that know exactly how long your arms are? So they come in close and you go to reach out for them and they're like, well, I don't think so. You can't quite get me when I'm out here. So doing those handling exercises, simple things, taking their collar, you know, bringing them in nice and close, being able to pick them up because you never know when that, that situation arises. Being able to pick them up, the fact that we do dog sledding, being able to pick them up is extremely important to us. And it's not just for dog sledding, but it's also for hiking. If they ever get hurt, I love the fact like with Memphis, Memphis still to this day, you can pick her up and flip her over like a baby. And she she's perfectly fine with it. She If she, if she were to ever get hurt, we could pick her up and carry her wherever we needed to go. That is something that we really do try to work with them with, just to, to know that it's okay. And then the other thing like that I want to work with Kira with, uh, Memphis already knows how to do it, is being put in a bag, like a sled bag. Okay. Because if you're ever out sledding, they have there's a bag on the sled, and the dogs need to know that that is also a safe place. Because if you're if your dog sledding with your dogs and one of your dogs gets injured, that's you know part of the point of having the dog bag. It's so you can take your dog off the line. You know if they hurt their leg, if something happens, and you need to be able to take them back, you need to be able to put them in that bag and zip the bag up and take them back down the trail. Okay. So that's, that's another that's thing like that she'll learn. Yeah. Yeah. And do you yeah, start Memphis it when likes she... the bag? Does she now? Do you start it when she's when they're Kira's age, like in a you know, a, a, like in even in the summertime? Let's say you know, would you introduce it to her that way, or how, what's the process for that? She'll probably start getting introduced to that. Yeah, probably while she's still pretty young. Uh, Memphis always liked blankets and like she always liked being under things. So I wasn't really worried about her, you know, making sure that she liked that. I actually have a picture of her with the sled we bought last year where she jumped right in it. it was like, oh, I can get in here. So with Memphis, it was really easy. I have a feeling it probably will be with Kira as well. But it's just something where you want to introduce, again, the noise that the bag makes, the being in there, it's kind of a little dark, things like that. But you know, just, just in case I, again, we don't, we just sled recreationally. We don't race. I mean, we might someday, you never know, but it is something that they do need to know how to do just in case. Yeah. I, I love that. And I love, uh, I love that you you devote specific time just to that. I could totally appreciate how that would be a really helpful thing um, in, in, because you're in the, I'm sure you could be in the middle of nowhere and you need the dog to be comfortable with going in the bag. Yeah. Yeah, it's very, it's a very important thing. You just, you don't know what can happen. I mean, there's, you know, I know Memphis. Um, you just, you just don't know what could happen. So you want to be able to make sure that if you have to get them out of there, you can get them out of there safely. Yeah. We had to care. We took, uh, we took Shiloh on a hike one time. I know on a really long hike one time and she ended up um, cutting the pad of her foot and Jamie had a big hiking backpack. And she was a tiny husky. She was only 35, 35 pounds full grown. He actually put her in the backpack with just her head sticking out and we carried her off the trail. Wow. Wow. It's impressive that he could carry her, uh, in, not only in that position, but what a, that's a pretty uh, diff- challenging scenario, it sounds like, for sure. Yeah. Yeah. But, but again, was, the handling. She was a tiny husky. Yeah, well, and the, exactly. the handling, the handling aspect of that, I mean, it's just one of those scenarios where she was comfortable with it. And it's, it's just so important. Um, another thing I wanted to mention for those uh, husky puppy owners out there, and this might be a new idea to you, but it's something that we think is so important when we're talking about building a little bit of drive, building like some um, enthusiasm in your training and having a puppy who loves to work, loves to train, loves to like be engaged with you. And it's something that we call 10 treat training. What we'll do when we bring a, a new puppy home is uh, we'll often get our treats out well in advance of actually needing them. But we'll get maybe like, and I don't know, Jesse, if you use these kind of things, but there's like these rollover, uh, like it looks like a big sausage, like a chub, I think they're called. And you cut them up into little tiny pieces. But what we'll do is we'll cut those up and into 10 treat 
portions, 10 treat uh, uh, amounts. And then we'll place them around or we'll place all the little baggies in the fridge. And we'll place them around if we're, let's say, for example, we're bringing our puppy out into the kitchen. We'll put a, a couple of these, uh, these training pouches in a couple of different spots. And then at random times, we'll pull out some of those treats and we'll only train for 10 treats. We'll do one exercise. Maybe it's response to name. Maybe it's a sit or lie down luring or uh, whatever it is. It, maybe even it's even it could be handling like hippie shake. For example, our toy poodle was a little hand shy. She was so tiny and little that you can't help but have to bend over a little bit. And that pressure would create her to be like, OK, so we really had to reinforce her coming in nice and close to be able to take the collar. But by training 10 treats at a time, it allows you to uh, begin with a dog who's excited about the training and end with the dog who's still excited about the training because you haven't burned them out. You haven't gone on for too long with whatever the exercise is. The other really great part about it is that you can uh, you can choose to do you can again you can place them all uh, uh, around your house. You can choose to do one exercise you know uh, before you have your coffee in the morning or you know before your breakfast or your tea or whatever, and then you can do another exercise just after. And you don't ever look like you're in training mode, which is something that people will often do. They'll uh, you know get their bait pouch on or they'll you know load their pockets up full of treats and then they'll go into training mode. And your dog very quickly learns. And I'm sure that Kira she's a sharp little cook from what I've seen and your dog quickly learns that when you're in training mode it means it's time to listen but when you're at random times right. if you're introducing training at random times it's really great your puppy will quickly understand that uh, you know they need to listen all the time and that it's really valuable to pay attention to stay engaged and lots of fun to do training so uh, for those of you at home with uh, with puppies right now I uh, encourage you to try that 10 treat training where you just simple fast work on an exercise and then you're done for uh, you know a short period of time do it a few times over the course of the day and you'll find that your puppy is really even more motivated uh, to, to do training and to have fun with you. It's always uh, important to have fun with them. It is. It is for sure. And I know um, you and I talk a little bit about all of the different things that we do with our dogs. And you mentioned agility. Now, is, is are you could you foresee agility in Kira's future? Is that something you like to do with her? Yeah, yeah. I definitely think so. I, I think that, um, like I said, she already doesn't seem to be very fearful of the things that we have out there. And, uh, you know, she won't be able to start it again until she's a little bit older, but um, she'll be able to do the, the tunnel and the little things here in the yard. I do think she'll do agility. I don't know if we'll ever get into competing. You know, I've, I did agility with Shelby for eight years. I mean, now I never competed with any of my dogs. And part of it is Shelby doesn't have the gr the best recall. She's a Husky. Uh, Memphis doesn't have the best recall. She has a good recall, but it's not a solid recall. So I always have that fear that I'm going to take them to an agility ring somewhere and they're just going to take off and clear the fence. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So it... I'm hoping to really work with Kira on a good, good, solid recall. Yeah. Oh. Yeah, for sure. That that off leash, um, that off leash ability in uh, in agility, because there uh, we've been to lots of competitions where there is no fence. You know, there's literally yeah. like a you know, just like a, a a banner that's sort of on one side of the the ring. So it is really important for those of you guys who are looking to get into agility, try out agility. Make sure you're working lots on your response name, on your recall, on yes. attention on you, and uh, because it's such a valuable skill, it'll also speed up your agility training because you're not spending most of your time trying to get your dog to come back to reset for the next, um, for the next round. But I, Memphis I, I, has gone through agility a few times and like she gets to the point where she'll be out there and we'll be practicing and she either has a really good day or a really zoomy day. She'll get out there and she'll be fully focused on me and she'll do the sit and stay at the beginning and she'll hit the first two obstacles. And then it's like something in her brain just goes, I'm a Husky and she just <laughs> takes off. Yeah, yes, <laughs> and yeah. there are days where she listens perfectly and days where she's still a husky. <laughs> yeah. I um I want to jump into the chat here really quick. Angela Moore said, will that work at any age? And I think she's talking about that 10 treat training. And uh, absolutely, for sure. You know, when, when you have a dog who... Um, it doesn't matter how old they are. We do this re with rehomed dogs as well. It's a great way to, uh, you know, get some engagement with them for them to see you as really valuable to, you know, break out a few treats, even uh, with your adult dog. Doesn't matter what the exercise is or what the skill is. You can work on something. Could be sits. Maybe it's like, maybe it's, uh, you know, like hand signals. Maybe you're working on like more advanced stuff. Doesn't matter what it is, but keep those training sessions short and sweet because it's all about attitude. I know, I know, Jess, I'm sure that's a big deal with, uh, with your dogs as well. You know, all of our 
All of our training is all about the dog's attitude because if you have a dog who wants to listen, uh, who wants to work for you, then you're going to have a dog who learns more quickly. And, and I know, uh, I'm sure it's the same with you. Oh, yeah, definitely. Now, we talked a little bit about agility uh, in next week. The train station it won't be on a Thursday night. It's going to be on a Tuesday night. It's our after hours agility. So if you guys are into agility, make sure you uh, join us on Tuesday night. And be we call it after hours agility because it's literally after we train for the night, uh, after we've been teaching for the night. And our after hours agility show starts at 10 p.m. Um, so if you're up that late, and I, I don't know if our UK friends will be able to join us, but definitely check it out here on the McCann Dogs YouTube channel. Now, Jess, you announced some big things um, tomorrow. There may may be a, a, a husky or a, a puppy haul. Yes, yes, now, that's what we're going to try to get done. Now, what other what other things are there? Any uh, other things that you've got sort of uh, in the wait, uh, ready to go out? Some exciting things that you might be doing uh, on the on your Gone to the Snow Dogs channel or the Snow Dogs vlogs. Um, we definitely have some ideas for a lot of different videos we want to film with her. Um, I think we're going to up some of our uploads with them so that I don't want people, because right now we only upload two days a week on that channel, and I don't want people who watch that channel and don't necessarily watch the other channel to miss out on what's going on. So I think we're probably going to start upping, uploading a bonus video each week, you know, some type of puppy video just to just to t kind of get something else out there so people don't miss her as she grows up. Because I know not everybody that watches Gone to the Snow Dogs also watches the vlogs. Because the vlogs, you'll be able to see her progress pretty clearly. But on yeah. the dogs channel, I don't I don't want people to miss out on that. We thought about doing like a puppy puppy video a week, you know. It, here she is at 11 weeks and here she is at 12 yes. weeks. But yeah, we, have, it, we definitely have some ideas. There's such a benefit. Um, and certainly it's fun for the uh, people watching her grow up. But there's such a benefit when in like three years when you look back and you can see her how she was you know I always regret uh, when our dogs get a little older and I always say like I should have taken more pictures or I should have done more mm -hmm. video and it's so much fun if you're if you're watching gone to the snow dog or the snow dogs vlogs to watch her grow up and you can even jump back and see some of your other dogs as they were uh, you know growing up as well which is really really cool now for the McCann dogs uh, uh, subscribers who have just been introduced to you tonight Jess where can they find you um, you can pretty much find us all over the place. Go into the Snow Dogs. You can search us on all social, social media, uh, Instagram, Twitter, Facebook, YouTube, TikTok, because, you know, we got to jump on everything that's out there. <laughs> yeah, you had a pretty you had a pretty great um, TikTok post the other day, didn't you? Yeah, um, I posted a cute little video on TikTok of Shelby teaching uh, Kira how to dig because you know that's just a great thing for a husky to learn <laughs> um so our dogs i i know it's inevitable for huskies to dig so our dogs actually do have a sandbox where they're allowed to dig it also helps with training them not to dig up the entire yard they're only allowed to dig in one area of the yard and that is it that's so she's already learning that that is the place you know there's certain battles that just aren't worth fighting and trying to get a husky to not dig is not a battle that i'm willing to fight i just we'll just give you a space for it and that'll be better um but yeah you can pretty much find us on all those places and then snow dogs vlogs same thing you know youtube facebook instagram twitter we're all over the social medias <laughs> amazing well i want to thank you guys for joining us i know we had a quite a, quite a representation from the audience tonight uh so lots of hashtag audience and lots of great questions about yeah. kira and look at how adorable she is guys isn't that look at it her, in her great big puppy paws i could see her being um, a pretty pretty big husky when she's full grown yeah you're it's gonna be a big girl huh a big girl <laughs> but on that note, I want to thank you, Jess, for joining us. It was uh, fun having a chat, uh, and it was fun, um, you know, introducing our audience to the Snow Dogs channel. Be sure to check out uh, Gone to the Snow Dogs and Snow Dogs vlogs on uh, all of the social platforms. I think uh, because there's tons of great content, and it's so much fun. And m you'll get to watch this puppy grow up, and and that's a really really exciting process. On that note, Jess, I want to thank you. And Kira, thank Kira for me as well. Uh, I'm Ken Steep. I want to thank you, the audience, for joining us. If this is your first time on the channel, make sure you hit that subscribe button. We publish new videos every single week to help you to have a well-behaved four-legged family member. And I will see you soon. Happy training, guys. Bye for now.